Hi, this is Sarah Madison, and I'm a member of the Quabbin Art Association and also the Guild of American Paper Cutters. I'd like to spend a few minutes with you sharing some information about paper cutting techniques and tools, and we'll, uh, we'll also give you a little bit of a demo to help you understand how I use those tools. If you're at home and you're interested in doing some paper cutting, you really can get started pretty easily if you have a pair of household scissors, some paper that you can draw on or print a design on, and then um, you can get started by uh, sitting down with that and then going ahead and, and cutting. There are a couple of issues that I'll address with regards to the design, but if you do not want to design anything yourself, then I might suggest that you pick up a, a book or go online and look for prepared paper cutting designs. There are many booklets out there that have designs as well as instructions. You can also go online and just look for silhouettes. Um, Dover publications have a lot of copyright free silhouettes and there are several other um, books available that will, will offer you a wide variety of silhouettes all ready for paper cutting. And then you can either just print out and resize one of the images, or you could make a composition by putting several images together. But really having just one design, a pair of, of scissors and printing that design on the paper and you're ready to go. As you get more sophisticated and more interested in paper cutting, then you might be interested in upgrading your tools. And I have three particular tools that I prefer to use for my paper cutting. These are cutting tools. And that's a pair of specialized paper cutting scissors. And these scissors I purchased online from an overseas distributor. And what makes them particularly special is that there's a, there are little ridged lines at the base of the scissor V here that help to grip the paper and hold it as I'm doing my paper cutting. Scissors I primarily use for cutting curves and large areas. When I'm working on straight areas, I actually like to use this little Fiskars X-Acto blade knife. And this one's particularly nice because it has a quick release for the blades so that I can pull them out in and out and replace them as they get dull. I usually order boxes of blades by the 100 from Amazon because your blades will dull very, very quickly as you work on paper cuttings. Uh, with these designs that I have in front of me, it's a series of book plates, four inch by six inch book plates. I'll probably go through um, an average of three to five blades before I finish this project. The other cutting implement I like to use is a little box cutter with a snap off tip. Again, it makes it very, very quick and easy if the blade gets dull. I can just flip off that tip and then I have a nice, clean, fresh blade. My primary cutting tools are the scissors and the Fiskars. And really any kind of X-Acto knife. There are some with ergonomic handles. I've tried a whole diff bunch of different styles and I just happen to like the feel of this one as well as the quick release. But it's all personal preference. So. Once you have your cutting tools, then you have to make a decision about um, paper. And as I mentioned, you might just try computer paper and drawing a design or printing a design on that, which is what I have here. As you advance and become a little bit more uh, concerned about the longevity of your work, you might be interested in working with acid-free silhouette papers. And in this case, I use two different styles, one that's a double-sided black and one that's a single-side black and single-side white. I use the, the white option if I really want to be cutting through just one layer and produce my, my silhouette from one layer. 
In this case, it allows me to print my design right on the, the single sheet, do the cutting, and then my finished silhouette is ready on the, on the other side. Um, sometimes, if I'm commissioned to do a larger piece that's going to be framed in a floating frame, then I would prefer to use the double-sided black because viewing a floating frame, it's a design sandwiched between two layers of glass. And if you flip that frame back and forth, the front to the back, you can see the silhouette from both sides. And I like a cleaner, more polished look of a black silhouette on both sides rather than the black on the front or the white on the back. If you are framing the the ones uh, with the white backside, you would be framing those in a more traditional frame that has a, a mat board, mount board, uh, sealed back frame, and so you're only viewing it from the front. Alternately, you might do something like this paper cutting, which is mounted against a watercolor that I did myself, and then um, raised a bit, the, mat, the paper cutting is raised with some foam backing to give a, the illusion of a little bit of depth when the light hits it. It causes a little bit of shadowing and gives the illusion of some depth. So there are a variety of, of ways that you can frame. You can also choose papers that are colored paper. You can create multiple layers of color. I tend to, to prefer to make my paper cuttings just black silhouettes and then use different mount colors, matte colors, or the watercolor backings. When you're cutting, if you're using scissors, then you're typically just working by holding the, the sheet of paper in your hand and making your cuts around. And you're always going to turn the paper not try to crank your hand around. That's an unnatural motion. So paper cutters will constantly be turning their work. If you're going to use an X-Acto knife, then you're going to have to worry about a cutting surface underneath your paper, your paper cut design. There are a couple of different surfaces people will use. For you at home, a stack of newspapers or a couple of sheets of cardboard underneath will work just fine. It'll protect that blade when you cut down through your design. You'll just need to replace the newspaper and cardboard as it gets too slashed up. At some point, your, your blade might start getting caught in the grooves, and so that would be time to replace. If you want to um, invest a little bit more money in some products that, will, that make life easier, you might invest in a self-healing mat, which is what I have here. They come as single sheets, or I also have a rotating mat, uh, mat uh, self-healing mat. But because I choose to work at a 45 degree angle drafting table, which helps to keep my back and my neck upright, I use the, the single stabilized mat. The, the rotating mat can't really rotate with this little lip here that holds everything in place. If I were working on a flat dining room table, then the rotating mat would be very beneficial because it would reduce the stress on the paper because I'd be just turning the mat instead of constantly handling the paper. When you are starting your paper cutting, if you're purchasing an image online um, or a pattern that's been specifically designed for paper cutting, one of the issues about the design is already addressed, and that is the fact that everything that is going to be left after you cut, all the lines that are going to be left here when you make your cuts, have to be connected. If they're not connected, bits and pieces will fall away and fall right out of your design. If you're designing your own, then bear in mind that as you're creating these images, everything has to touch another black line if it's going to be a black silhouette because you're going to want to cut out these white pieces. And whenever you take out a white piece, you need to have those black remaining sections all connected to retain the integrity of the paper cutting design. So now when I'm cutting, I'm choosing to cut my long, my longer lines first, 
and then my short lines to pop the piece out. And very frequently, especially with an X-Acto knife, the angle of the knife is so acute that it's hard to tell when you've drawn your knife down where the cutting blade has stopped. And so sometimes I don't go far enough, and that's what's happened in this instance. I just didn't quite cut it far enough so that white piece isn't ready to come out yet. You never ever want to tug at it to pull it out. You have to go back in with your blade and cut again to try to make that little final connection. I'm generally going to work my cutting from the most intricate, most detailed areas first. They're the most delicate, so if I can pop them out while I still have a majority of the, the image intact, it gives me a little bit better control. So I have some very, very, very teeny squares here, and what I'll do is I will choose to go in and cut these first. It would be so difficult to cut those out if I had cut out everything around them. It would be um, it would be hard for me to hold the design because I'd be just holding little thin lines that I had already cut. And it would be potentially very dangerous to the paper cutting. So now we've popped out those two little squares. And we would continue on in that manner, constantly turning my paper, going back over if I don't quite make it, make it to the corners. always drawing my knife towards me so that my arm and my wrist and my hand are always pretty much in the same angle so that it reduces any stress and tension. When I have long lines, again, I'm going to, I'm going to cut my long edges first, parallel, one to one side, then to the other. Then I'm going to turn and then I'm going to cut those short edges and pop them out. And when you get those cuts perfectly aligned, those edges just pop right out. It's a lovely sensation. So you might be working with the X-Acto knife longer than you're working with the scissors. Uh, you might decide to do all the straights at once you might get bored and decide that you just want to trade off. Um, your hand may get tired, your finger may get cramped from pressing on the, 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 the knife to make the, uh, the pressure enough to go down through your layer of, of paper. That's one consideration for starting with single layers is it's much easier to learn and to get the pressure correct. Um, when you're working with thicker index card weight paper, it's that's much harder to get through that extra thick layer, either with the, the blade or the scissors. Also, the other issue is that the thicker your paper, probably the more quickly your, your blade is going to dull. Some people um, will actually choose to work on a quarter inch thick piece of tempered glass the, the blade will glide much more smoothly rather than cutting in and kind of grabbing in this self-healing mat. Um, but the trade-off is that with the glass, the blades will definitely dull much more quickly and you'll go through more as you're working your design. How would you know if your blade needed to be changed? Your blade will catch. It won't cut smoothly. It won't, won't glide. And the minute that starts happening, you, you need to discard the blade because otherwise you'll just run the risk of tearing your design and giving yourself a headache. Now, there are some parts of this that I would not want to use my X-Acto knife because it's harder to make the maneuver. And specifically, I'm talking about round areas, little round areas like these berries. Um, there might also be bigger areas that I would like to do more quickly with the scissors rather than to take a chance of trying to keep a straight line with my X-Acto blade. 
So that's when I would pick up my scissors. Although the straight line issue, this is a handcrafted item. So I don't worry overly much about a little bit of wibble wobble to my lines. Um, this is purposefully done by hand. It's not intended to be a laser cut for mass production. So when it's put on display, people are going to see these little bit of imperfections and know the time and, and energy that was spent on, on making this cutting. So up here, I actually want to do a little bit with my scissors to try to get some of these areas in these curves. And when you're first starting out with a, uh, a curved area, I like to, or, or any, when you're first starting out with your scissors, I always like to make an X entry point to get my scissors in there. I don't want to be poking my scissors into the paper because it's gonna put stress on the paper. It runs the risk of my wrinkling the, the paper with my fingers. It also might cause unnecessary tears. So creating an opening with the X-Acto knife is a great way to start. And then what I choose to do is to always go right for a corner. I dive right up into a corner and then I turn my paper and I'm going to want to cut along this line and I'm right-handed so I try to cut keeping my lines on the right-hand size of my scissors to start with but I already know that this is an acute this is a right angle here it's too acute for me to take my scissors and to make a turn and get a clean cut so a technique I have to use is to place my scissors a little bit away from that corner, cut in, and then I can glide up the side of that line. And I go right into the corner there. Now, I like to snip out dead wood, so I'm just gonna take out that piece so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Now, the same thing's gonna happen here. I wanna turn and come up this line, but I cannot, I, there's, I, there's no way I can make that right angle by moving my scissors around. So I'll, again, instead of being in the corner, the very corner, I'm gonna back off a bit, start here, and then I'm gonna go up and along that line. And then we're gonna do that one more time on this side. Actually, we're gonna do it two, two more times. I'm gonna finish this one too. So now I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna come right up alongside into that corner. And this guy's still holding hands there. So I don't tug, I go back in with my scissors and I can snip with my scissors until it falls off or I could place it back down onto my cutting surface and use my X-Acto knife to clean that. So now if you look at this, we don't have a clean rectangle yet. We have these little bits. Well, we know we can't get those by our normal direction of cutting, but what if I reverse my direction? What if I now put the line on the left side of my scissors? Can I get in there? And the answer is very easily. The other thing that happens because I'm right-handed though, when I make this flip, it's gonna be easier for me if instead of cutting on top of the paper, if I take my scissors down below and come up from underneath. I don't know why that is, but when you're learning paper cutting, they'll always tell you that, that you should switch from top to bottom and back and forth as needed. So now I've made my cut and I'm not really happy. I didn't get a really clean cut. I can still see a little bit of white. So I have a choice to keep working at this with the scissors or if I wanted, I could take it back down to the mat and I could just clean up that corner a little bit with my X-Acto knife. So constantly working back and forth with your tools, whichever tends to work better for the situation that you're in. So again, I'm gonna use my scissors and come along here and we'll finish this side. Sometimes it feels like you're overcutting and that's 
just may be what you need to do. You just have to trust that if it's still hanging on, you haven't gone far enough. And that's the basics for paper cutting. So I would continue to work on this, cutting away all of the white until I end up with my final black silhouette, as you saw in this image. So anything that you see that's the watercolor background was originally the area that I had to cut it out. And we're left with a lovely, lovely black silhouette. I think that's about it for the tools and the techniques. So if you're interested, as I said, you can check resources online. Um, if you're near the Hartford, Connecticut area, there's Jerry's Artorama and Dick's, Dick's, Dick Blick's Art Supply. Um, very often you can find some of these nicer X-Acto knives. If you're interested in actually purchasing paper cutting scissors, sometimes you can get some fingernail cutting scissors or you might find specialized sewing scissors that will serve as a, a good start. Um, if you're really ready to take the dive, you can go online and you can Google for paper cutting scissors and actually order from a, a, a paper cutting supply house. And as you can see, I have four different scissors here that I've tried during my career, which is only about, I guess I've been paper cutting for about six years. And, uh, and I have my favorites. I have my gold-handled favorites. And frankly, I'd tell you where I ordered them from, but I can't remember. So thank you very, very much for joining me. And I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about paper cutting and the tools, the designs. And I hope I've piqued your interest.